In this video, we'll be doing another ranking example for average velocity. So let's start off by reminding ourselves what average velocity is. Average velocity is equal to the displacement or the change in position over the change in time, where the change in position is equal to the final position minus the initial position all over the final time minus the initial time. At face value, this example and the first average velocity example don't really look alike. The first one had a graph of position versus time, and then this one we have a motion diagram. But if you really look at it, the first one we were dealing with just position and time, and then in this motion diagram that we have here, it's in terms of position and the spacing of the dots represents some sort of time interval. So at the heart of it, both of these examples are the same. So we're going to hope to use the prior knowledge that we gained from the first example and apply those same techniques here. So in the first example, we started off by looking at the time intervals. Looking at these diagrams here, there's no information about time. So let's go back into the problem and let's take a look and see if we can figure out what the time intervals are. So it says to rank the average velocity from least to greatest in the first three time intervals. And the first four dots represent the first three time intervals. So in each diagram, what we're going to do is we're going to mark the first three time intervals and that's represented by the first four dots. So we start at the first dot and then we count two, three, four and we put another mark there. And now that is our three time intervals. Let's do the same for the rest of them. We go here and then we have four for B. We start at that one and we go up to four. For D, we need to start at the first dot and then we finish at the fourth dot. We start at the first dot for E, finish at the fourth dot. And then for F, we start at the first dot, two, three, and then four and finish there. So by marking these intervals off, we have created the same time interval for each diagram designated by the red lines. Recall from the first average velocity example, when we have the same time interval, we just need to look at what the displacement is to be able to rank the average velocities because for the same time interval, a larger displacement will give a larger average velocity. Going down, taking the final position minus the initial position, which are designated by those red lines, we have six meters for displacement in A, we have nine meters for displacement in B, we have three meters for displacement in C, we have seven minus one, so six meters for displacement in D, we have seven minus one again, six meters for displacement in E, and then finishing off, we have 4.5 meters for displacement in F. So now that we've dis determined the displacements for each, we can rank them. Starting with the smallest, we have C. Moving on, we have F, which is 4.5. Then we have a whole lot of sixes, so A, D, and E. Oh, man. Then we have B to round everything out at nine meters. So our reasoning for the ranking is that since they all had the same time interval, it 
a larger displacement gives a larger average velocity. At face value, this problem seemed different than the first example we dealt with, but in actuality, they both dealt with dealing with average velocity given a position and time representation. So this is a good example of as you move through, through the course, if you get stuck on a particular problem, go back and look and see if you can draw parallels to a problem that you previously solved. Because on the face, it may look different. So the problem might have different wording, but the physics, what's at the heart of the problem, may be the same.